Fidel okay. Castro opened up the borders yeah. and he just basically told everybody, I'm not patrolling the borders. Mm -hmm. Whoever wants to leave, leave. Wow. Yeah. And everyone that kind of like could had mm -hmm. could and wanted to left. Some people left on rafts. Yeah. You know, it was like like boats made from like anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Today on the show, we have the amazing actress, producer, filmmaker, Leslie Juvet. Hi. Welcome to the Zoo. Oh, thanks for having me, you guys. I appreciate it. Of course. Fellow uh, Miami, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Cuban, Miami. Cubana. Born, born in Havana. Born in Havana, Cuba. Raised wow. in Miami, Florida. Yeah. Barbara yes. Goldman High School. Barbara What's Goldman up? Senior <laughs> High. Oh, no. So off camera, she was telling us how Umbi actually went to the preppy school in Miami. Right. Well, yeah. I mentioned that. I mentioned that I went to a small boy Catholic school that was always skipping class. And, but you I were the criminal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, was like the bougie. He I was went the to the up, bougie. I was, I was the hookup for the things that they can't get in that particular school. Oh, my oh, okay. I went to raves and all that stuff. And I always had You went to ultra, ultra music. Dude, I went to the first ultras. Oh, wow. My So my friends actually made the raves. Actually, you know what? I forgot. I remember gonna. I have a book that I didn't. I, it just came to me Fever. about the ravers in the, the '90s Miami. Yeah. That, that started the rave called Fever. We had to change the names because the guy got killed. Oh. Okay. A guy that was also born in Cuba and comes to Miami. And he got yeah. Involved. Um. And the guys that did Ultra came out from under these guys. Oh so wow. So they were the first ones to throw like raves in '95, like on South Beach when uh, Warsaw. It was like a gay club, but they would give these kids one night to do it. Right, a yeah. That kind of stuff. All right, but let's get to you. Enough about me. Like, no, let's get I to know, you. but I was just, I was the like connection. reminiscing because yeah. I was like, I remember Ultra Music Film Festival. I would go every year. Okay. And it's the thing in Miami. That's why I left Miami because it's crazy. It was I was so like, stuff. I need to, you been you know. For how long? It's been 10 years. Okay, yeah. so you made this movie 90 Miles. Yeah. All right, it's winning all kinds of awards. Mm -hmm. uh, you wrote and directed it? I wrote it, directed it, I was in it, right. I produced it. I had to produce it because it was like, I have my producer, but you know how it is. Just, like, things get crazy, so I like had to put all these hats on, but that's kind of what happened, yeah. And it's no. based uh, on yeah. your real life? Yes, real life experiences yes, of yes. My family mm -hmm. and I are 100% Cuban. I was born in Cuba, and during the communist regime, we escaped in 1994. You might know about El Maleconazo, Right. But it was like... El Ma also, they call it El Mariel. El was Mariel was in thing? the 80s, kind of like Scarface. Oh, this, okay, no, this, this was, was like 1990s. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. that. I remember yeah, that. yeah. Fidel okay. Castro opened up the borders, yeah. and he just basically told everybody, I'm not patrolling the borders. Mm -hmm. Whoever wants to leave, leave. Wow. Yeah. And everyone that kind of like... Could. Had, mm -hmm. could, and wanted to, left. Some people left on rafts. Yeah. You know, it was like, like boats made from like anything mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, i mean you'll see random pictures that i have at the end of the movie people leaving in, in cars that they made boats oh wow yeah like their cars they they just queriendo se puede you know cuban it, it, se puede. It, yeah. it is what it is i mean you know how cubans are yeah. you do what you got to do to yeah. survive yeah. totally so yeah no my grandfather he well he defected because he was a doctor and he actually was with the revolutionaries and then he mm -hmm. realized okay this is not what we fought for 10 years later he had to escape he had to swim with two other guys to Guantanamo Bay, but he had to be out in the water for like three days. Oh, wow. And then he sees like a military ship, and he's like, oh, if that's a Cuban flag, we're screwed. Yeah. It was an American flag, they were rescued. And oh, wow. I mean, that's the thing. The yeah. thing is, is that the movie is kind of about some family members are communists. Yeah. Because the revolution, it, it's like a, it's like it was a facade. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people thought that it was going to be amazing. Like my grandparents, we talk about it all the time. They were like, we thought Fidel Castro was really going to change, cause, no? mm -hmm. change Cuba or mm -hmm. whatever. But after 10 years, you, you know, you go to the store, there's no food, there's nothing. You realize this is this is like, yeah. for lack of a better word. Yeah. So then, you know, that's when you have the conflict between families. But some people are still really much into it. They believe that it's everything and more. And yeah, my, my family got split apart. Um, but uh, in the movie, now 90 miles, for people are like, why is it called 90 miles? Uh, Cuba is 90 miles away from Florida, the Florida Keys. So yeah. It's 90 miles of ocean that you got to get through. Mm -hmm. Right? Exactly. So tell us a little bit more about, about you know, the plot of the movie and, and, and what happens. Um, so I'm going to tell you my story because yeah. the movie's a little bit... I. There was a huge riot in, in recently in July mm -hmm. between the oh, Cuban yeah. people. I was marching here in, in, in downtown. So was I. Yeah. And I was marching everywhere. I was even posted videos on Instagram and all that stuff. There was a huge riot 
So my movie is more about my family and what we did to get out of you Cuba. You play your mother. I play my mother. Oh, I do. Wow. How do you know that? Yeah, I do. <laughs> he was like, I did my research. <laughs> <laughs> you play your mother. I play my mother. Um, and I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to somehow involve what happened with the youth of today and make the movie that I made. Because my movie was more about the 90s mm -hmm. and what happened in 1994. Your experience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But I was like, how can I combine what's going on with the youth today and what happened with my family? So that's what I did. I intertwined both of the stories and I made the newer version. Okay. Because what people don't realize is that a lot of these kids nowadays, they don't have freedom of speech. And they cannot say Are you whatever. Talking about uh, the United States or Cuba? <laughs> that's well, a, that's don't get me in trouble. No, 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 that's <laughs> that's that's <laughs> stick with Cuba. Stick with Cuba. We had that big deal on another show, but go ahead. I mean, listen, <laughs> I, I've had, con yeah, you know, I, it's we're getting there. I mean, who knows? But but Cuba mm -hmm. right now, I mean, they don't have weapons. They don't have freedom of speech, mm -hmm. so they couldn't say anything. The COVID got really bad. A lot of people were dying. I mean, you see it's videos horrible. of people in the hospital mm -hmm. that are trying to get medicine for coronavirus, simple coronavirus. There are dead people right next to them in the hallways mm -hmm. that have been there for days, not even like one day, they've been there for days. And there's like holes on the walls, there's people puking, it's, it's completely, you like people don't really understand what happened. So as soon as the riot started, and they didn't have guns, they couldn't, they couldn't protect themselves. Mm -hmm. They had the government shooting at them. They, they couldn't even say how they really feel. I mean, we were the ones that had to promote their, their videos to really show what was going on in Cuba. And I, and, I, and I didn't realize that people had no idea that Cuba was this bad. So I really needed to make that change in my movie and mm -hmm. not make it about the 90s, but really transition into it's still happening right. today. What's really interesting too, you started writing the story when you were 16 years old. I was basically writing the book when I was 16 and then when I decided to go to film school because I, I'm, I'm an actress but I also went to film school and I was like I'm going to produce, write and direct. I was writing the movie when I was like in my college days. That's when I was like okay I have to sit down and write the movie. I couldn't, I was trying to write the movie for a long time and I couldn't spit the words out. And I didn't realize how traumatized I was oh, wow. well, until I started writing. I would like write and cry, write and shiver, mm -hmm. write and like get cold sweats. Because people don't realize like we hold these traumas in, in, in our in ourselves yeah. that we experience as kids and being a four year old kid traveling 90 miles in the middle of the hot weather, there are storms or sharks. I mean, you see all kinds of and things. And do you remember these memories? Like that's what happened when I was writing the movie. Mm. I was writing the movie and I started to remember things. Wow. And four I, years old is pretty young. You it know? was young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I remember very vaguely, but then I would talk to my mom. I would call my grandfather. I would try to get perspectives from everybody and get everyone's story. And right. it just became so real that when I would write, it would become really emotional. Mm -hmm. So when I finally finished the movie, I had the sound design, everything. I showed it to my friends. They all started crying. One of my friends that I grew up with, he cried and, and a lot of people cried. And I remember I was like, this is exactly what I want people to feel. I want people to feel connected to the movie and connected not to just Cubans, but all immigrants that have to come from all kinds of places for freedom, that are looking for freedom, a better life, even the small things like food, mm -hmm. water, clothes, you know, that we take, we take those things for granted. Let, let's take a break really quick. That was, that was I'm, I'm, I'm about to cry, right? But uh, we're going to take a break and we're going to be back and we're going to keep on talking to Leslie Uwe, Uwe. who is uh, all kinds of filmmaking talent and we're talking about 90 miles right here on the Zoom. <laughs> all right, y'all, we are back. The emotions are high, but they are necessary. Yes. You were telling us uh, off camera a little bit about how you haven't necessarily touched on the political aspects of Cuba in the, in the past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't really spoken about the political views of Cuba. It's, it's kind of a sensitive subject, yeah. especially now. I feel like in the last couple of years, it got really highly, severely sensitive to speak about politics. Um, but it's not Are you talking about speaking that among non-Cubans? Yeah, non-Cubans. Yeah. Yeah. Because I... It's funny because I, I've had conversations with people that are producers mm -hmm. and they're like, well, Cuba's beautiful. We love Cuba. And I'm like, oh, well, did you go to the real Cuba where people are like, have one pair of shoes and their right. kids yeah. don't have any shoes or like women have hernias in the back of their mm -hmm. like lower backs because they're carrying gallons of water because water trucks come randomly mm -hmm. and you have to get what you can get 
to survive. You, it might not come for another 10 days and they have to carry this for miles to go home. And I get, I get these conversations from people that never experienced communism. Well, they're also, you know, and I want to talk to you a little bit more about this after, after the show, because uh, I don't want to take up too much time with some of the things I'm dealing with, but I also have a project that I'm working on that's getting some steam about the Cuban Revolution itself. Yeah. My family was on either side of it. Yeah. So I, I got, you know, I, I, my, they didn't even tell me my grandfather was with Fidel until I, w I went to Cuba for the first time. And they're like, well, you have his name, we're worried because when he came here, he, you know, he was in the media explaining how Fidel was taking out all his you know, comrades who right. dared speak ab about you know, you know, the dictatorship. And what I realized here is, and, and I'm very forgiving, like when I first got to LA, when I started seeing the Che Guevara shirts and stuff, I know that they mean something different to other people. Yeah. They're, they're revolutionary heroes to these people, and that can be very inspiring. But they weren't good leaders. They weren't good, they might have been great revolutionaries, but they weren't good leaders. They became dictators and they, became, they created a tyranny, you know, whether yeah. regardless. And I think that some of the people who are not Cuban or outside of that, of, of our experience, they see that one sliver of heroism and that iconic image of that, what a revolution, I mean, the most iconic imagery of revolutionaries is Fidel Castro and Che Guevara, and, it, and it's inspiring. So when they hear people say no, that actually turned out bad, they, you know, it's, it kind of like sweeps the rug out of like this image that they have that was inspiring to them, right? right? Yeah. So it's a little weird to circumnavigate that. It's a little bit of, they don't have the full story. Right. So it's like they, they have a story of um, uh, like Peter Pan, right. right? Steal from the rich, give to the poor. That's the idea of the revolution, right? Let's just take from who has and give it to th the lower, like people in poverty. Right. However, what they don't realize is that these people killed like thousands, probably millions of people that actually were part of a pueblo Mm -hmm. And it was just for their own sake of p power. Yeah. That's the story that's really not being mentioned. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's being fed to us, like you said, iconic revolution. It's almost a fashion trend. It is. If you notice it. I guarantee you all the producers that, that talked to you about this were not history buffs. Rather, they, were, they were into the fashion of revolution of and rebellion and all these things, especially if you're in Hollywood. And so I think that, um, yeah, I, 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 I've dealt with that too. Like yeah. they don't know what to do with the stories. Like, wait, yeah. what are you trying to say actually happened? Yeah, and if you notice, there really isn't a lot of stories about Cuba. No. Like where can you find a movie that will talk about people that actually have left Cuba that has gone anywhere? Well, did you see the Wasp Network? I did see okay. it, but. I thought, okay, so I thought it was Let's well done, but the, to make the brothers, so, so the whole thing is that they kind of demonize uh, these brothers to the rescue that f basically just drop leaflets over Cuba to explain, hey, look, this is what yeah. is actually happening. And one of them gets shot down by the Cuban, um, by the Cuban uh, Air Force. They had spies going into Miami to infiltrate the group. They make the group look like really crazy. Of course, within the group, there were a few radicals, right? right? Like right wing radicals. Yeah. That happens, right? You're coming yeah. out of a communist country. You're gonna, so, but to make them the demons and yeah. make the spies from Cuba the kind of heroes was like, yeah. But that's the story that everybody has. Mm -hmm. You yeah. see, that's why when you kind of like challenge the reality, but it's okay because you lived it. I lived yeah. it. I that's can challenge yeah. whoever yeah. I want. Yeah, exactly. I was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was there. My mom would have never put me on a boat at the age of four if things were peach and gravy. Hell yeah. Come on, I tell people all the time, and it's not just producers, it's right. just people in general that are really into communism. They wanna sell this communist idea, everybody equal. The idea sounds beautiful, but the reality is that it's never really that way. So, okay, so in your movie, to bring it back to that, so you're showing the conflict between the families, some people are like, why are you leaving, that kind of thing? The movie is kind of showing what the dictators in Cuba do to the younger generation to actually get what they need to get when people are trying to leave. For example, there is a story of a woman that her father uh, betrayed Fidel Castro. She got raped by like mm. six of them, six of them. Like it was like a seven day torture th that they did to her. And the story was going around on social media. And I remember reading that and I was like, I wanna add that to my movie. Mm -hmm. So I kind of made my mom be that person along with my father, the one that's getting the family together and everybody leaving make sure that he had the, the whole entire like mission together in the movie while my mom was escaping from these people. So that's how I combined it. Now where's this, where can people see this movie? It's doing the festival route right now. Okay. 
It's after, a film feature or is it a short film? It's the short version of the feature film. Okay. Because it's a book, it's a franchise. It's a book, it's right. a it's a limited Has series. Has the book come out yet or, or you're working on that? Um, the book is in like, it's in transition. And it's and the short there. film, you're doing the, cir the festival circuit to get the funding to do the, the, the feature. Yes. Do you think oh, any girl. parts of the short film the will, will be will be used in the feature or are you going to shoot the whole thing no, again? No, we're going to shoot the whole thing again. Are because you going to pay shot, your mom again? I'm going to pay my mom, yes. Can I ask if you're a Scorpio? I'm an Aquarius. <laughs> But I have, have a lot of Scorpio Capricorn. Eyes. I have okay. a lot of Capricorn in me. Good for yeah, you, though. Ha happy yeah. recent birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You know, and you were just named Best Actress, and you know, at the Cannes Film Festival, which is a huge Cannes shorts, Cannes Cannes shorts. Shorts. But, yeah. but oh. still yeah. a prestigious yeah. honor. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, for don't anybody. Don't take it away, girl. Don't take it away. Yeah. No, I know. But, it's, but there's <laughs> the been specificity. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. For any actress, that's a huge honor. But I'm sure it means even more to you because you got to play your mom. I got to play my mom. Because there is a you know, a personal aspect to it. Has she seen it? Oh, my mom was there when we were filming it. She was crying, and she's just so proud. Was and she assistant director? She wasn't the assistant director, <laughs> but she definitely was one of the producers. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Next time, she's like, you're going to make me a consultant because I need to make sure everything from the revolution is on point. Yes. And she's very like, my mom is so, she's a, she loves Cuba so much, mm. and I just want to make sure that when I make the movie, I mean, I needed to make sure that the movie was done right because I, it's for her, really. Right. She's, she loves her country so much. And it was so painful for her to leave her people, everything behind. So the movie is really dedicated to my parents, wow. but awesome. also for the Cuban people. Oh, yeah. You know? I want to thank you. Uh, do we have more time? Can we just keep going? <laughs> we have to end the show. Okay, um, look, you, we, we, got, we, got, we got it in there. They, yeah. they, now they get something to like chew on. I think our audience is going to get a lot of this conversation. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank for you for saying me. the things you're saying. Yeah. Um, thank you for this movie. I haven't seen it yet, but I definitely will, and yeah. I can't wait to see the feature film. I'll send it to you guys. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. You guys can have a private viewing. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I would love awesome. that. Yeah, for and, sure. And uh, let's keep the conversation going with you because I think that you know you're here to stay. You, it, I think the time is right right now for I this story. I appreciate it. It is. It is. And you're the right person to tell it because a lot of people that come out that come at certain people to shut them up, they can't do that with you. Mm -hmm. Let them try. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, I lived through it. Right. How can you? Yeah. I mean, I know what's up, you know? It's Lived like, experience. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys, uh, follow us at LATV Network, and uh, we'll see you next time right here on The Zoo.